back to guns.com. My name is Taylor and today we're going to be reviewing the AR-15 that I use in three gun competition. Hopefully it gives you some good ideas for if you're looking to build one yourself or if you want to buy one. This is something that took me about eight months to build. I did this roughly four years ago, have ran 40,000 rounds through it very reliably in a lot of competitions and overall it's just been a great rifle. What you need to think about when buying or building an AR is what are you using it for? Personally, as a three gun competitor, my number one priority was reliability followed by lightweight. Your average AR-15 is gonna weigh eight to 13 pounds. This comes in at 5.2 without the optic, which is ridiculously light. I achieved that by using a lot of titanium and lightweight components, primarily from Battle Arms development. In here is the matched upper and lower billet set from Battle Arms Development. Notice that there's a lot of milling in this upper and lower, which is taking away material, reducing weight, and having a match set. Personally, it was important because I knew that they were gonna fit perfect together and it was just gonna work, that there weren't gonna be any sort of issues. Coming off of it is the barrel. So this is the 16 inch barrel. It's the 223 wild barrel from Battle Arms Development. Now that is important to mention because 223 wild allows you to shoot 223 and 5.56 safely. 5.56 has much higher pressure rating that is required and 223 wild addresses that. 16 inches for three gun is just a great size because it's short enough where you could get around a lot of obstacles without issue, but it's long enough to where you could really touch long range and still achieve good accuracy. At the end of the barrel is the DPMS Jerry Michelet comp. Originally on here was something much more expensive. It was a full titanium comp by V7, but it actually overcompensated on this particular firearm. I think part of that is because it's so lightweight, the comp just worked too well. The DPMS comp was super cheap and it works great. Moving into the rear of this rifle is the Sabre stock from Battle Arms Development. It is quite literally a buffer tube with an end plate. The end plate is fully adjustable. Mine is at a cant so that when I mount it, it just rolls right into the shoulder. And inside of here is the silent capture system by JP Rifle. The silent capture system replaces that normal spring, which you will see inside of a buffer tube with a captured spring and it's fully adjustable. The tungsten weights on here allow you to tune the bolt carrier group to the bolt in the gun in order to achieve the best cycle that you want with this gas system. I tuned it when I built it and have not had to touch it since. The trigger is by Elf Tactical. This is actually their PCC trigger. The reason why I decided to use the PCC trigger on my AR platform for the 223 is because of the heavy hammer. A lot of rifle primers are very hard and this allows me to know that I'm not gonna have light strikes because of that heavy hammer. The take up on the Elf trigger is just, it's absolutely ridiculous. There was a lot of research that went into finding this particular trigger group. And I will say that I've been very happy. The pull is roughly about three and a half pounds. And oops, before we forget, let's talk about the bolt carrier group. This is really going to be the heart of your AR is the bolt carrier group. Iron City Rifle Rakes Works makes this particular one. It has a DLC coating. You could shoot thousands of rounds and wipe it down. It has never been an issue. This is about four or five years old now, not a problem. The pin inside of it is actually a titanium firing pin. Same thing no reliability issues with that whatsoever. The rest of the lower that I have in here is actually built from Battle Arms Development, their lower parts kit. It's gonna take, it's a lot of titanium. The takedown pins are titanium. Some of the roll pins in here are titanium and it just came together really nicely to fit in their upper and lower set. So again, I knew that everything was gonna fit and it was just gonna be really high quality stuff. Outside of that are just basic stuff like the arrow riser for the Vortex. This is the one to six, the HD Gen 2. And for three gun, it's ideal because you have the flexibility of going from a one X to a six X and adding something like the switch view allows you to do so on the fly, right? Um, outside of that, 
If you have any questions on this particular platform, definitely let me know. I really am trying to give you a really good just overall review on this. You can buy a new Battle Arms Development Rifle. It's going to be very similar to mine, or you could build one and add a lot of these components. Uh, if you're looking at the Crazy Cerakote job, this is something that I did with Wicked Weaponry in New Hampshire. It was a custom Cerakote color that I had wanted. And Obviously it looks awesome, but outside of that, it really came down to making sure that the um, actual rifle itself is taken care of. So I don't have to worry about rust, scratches, stuff like that. The coating takes care of it. But thank you so much for watching. Again, this rifle has seen about 40,000 rounds. It's been in three gun competitions all across the country and overall has just been super reliable. So thank you. Please let us know if you have any questions. My name is Taylor with guns.com and I will catch you guys next time.